field that has emerged over the last few years called oncoimmunology, where um, uh, the approach with cancer is to use um, to identify the immunological defects and uh, try to correct those. Um, and uh, it's actually looking like it may supplant um, chemotherapy eventually, um, which we, we know doesn't work anyway, chemo and radiation, but it's the, those, they're, still the, they're still the conventional way of treating. But um, immunotherapy. So now we have a very powerful uh, immune program at Oasis. Um, and uh, we do it in, a, in a, um, a sequential way. What we need to realize with, in cancer, what happens? Cancer is, um, uh, produces certain chemicals, cytokines, that make the immune system, those cells in the immune system that are designed to kill the cancer, become blinded to them. It's as if the cancer cell put a force field around it, like in Star Trek, put a force field. In the, so here the macrophages show up, but they can't see it, right? The, and uh, all the other cells are kind of inactivated, okay? So it's a very uh, diabolical uh, process that the cancer has. Now, virally infected cells do similar type things. Um, they defend themselves. So anyway, um, if you understand that and you understand which cells are involved, so we know T cells, natural killer cells, activated lymphocytes are involved, dendritic cells are involved, macrophages are involved. All these cells are really involved specifically in killing cancer because there are two, basically two parts of the immune system, the innate and the uh, acquired immune system. It's mostly the acquired immune system that conquers cancer, except what's interesting is that one of the cells, the macrophages, are involved in both sides. They're part of the innate and the uh, acquired immune system. And that's a very important thing. So what cancer does is put them to sleep. But anyway, the macrophages are like Pac-Man. They gobble things up. But when they're gobbling them up, they also take a piece of it and show it to the T-cell. Now, the T-cells you've got to see are, the reason they have a T on their T-shirt is because they were born in the, bo the bone marrow like all other lymphocytes. Uh, but they were special. They went to the University of Thymus. This thymus gland is up here. And they went to the University of Thymus, and they get to wear T-shirts. So they come out of the University of Thymus, which is basically very similar to CIA training. So they come out as assassins. The only problem is they haven't yet been given their assignment. So they don't have a place to go. So they're killed, as, they're portrayed assassins, but they don't, have a, they don't know who to kill. That's where the dendritic cells and the macrophages come in. They're called, in, 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 in biology, they're called antigen-presenting cells. But really, when they're coming, they're, they show the photographs, the, the fingerprints, the DNA. And they go, aha, so now these, they become activated and they go after it. Okay. Natural killer cells don't need that. They, they, they just identify cancer anyway. But the T cells need to be activated. So anyway, as part of our protocol, we give something to, um, to wake up the macrophages. We uh, uh, use the dendritic cells. We do all these things to wake them up so that they can now teach the T cells to identify the enemy, which is the cancer, and to get rid of it. The other thing is, is we've got to... Uh, stimulate T cell production and stimulate lymphocyte production. And we can do that. There's um, um, a cytokine that's normally produced by macrophages mostly. It's produced by a lot of other cells, including end of the cells that line your blood vessels, etc. It's called IL-2, interleukin-2, but that really helps to wake things up. So if you provide immunotherapies in a certain sequence, for example, uh, in a chronic, if you, since cancer is a chronic inflammatory state, chronic inflammation is very different than acute inflammation. During chronic inflammation, there, the inflammatory process is actually contributing towards tissue proliferation. So it's actually contributing to tumor growth. So you wouldn't want to wake something up at that point or in, enhance that. What you want to do is first change the body into an acute phase. Get it into an acute phase so now you wake them up and they're going to gobble things up. So anyway, it's a complicated system works extremely well. We use it in Asia, and uh, we use it at Oasis, um, but it's a way of waking up. In addition to that, of course, uh, some of the, the mushrooms that are very well researched in, in, uh, in Japan and in, in the scientific literature, you know, reishi, maitake, these are well researched. Uh, Coriolis, uh, cordyceps, uh, agaricus, uh, chagas, there are many important mushrooms. And what do they do? They all wind up stimulating uh, and enhancing the uh, activity of natural killer cells and things like that. So we work directly with those. 
And I just want you to uh, understand that is a in a comprehensive program of working with cancer, you need to change the metabolism by diet, etc. You need to metabolically challenge cancer cells so that they are uh, una unable to deal with it and they die and the healthy cells don't. You haven't poisoned it. And the third thing you need to do is, of course, is enhance the immune system, wake it up, and get it back to work.